Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective, your Christian nerd, bringing you analysis, reviews, and fun. In this video, we're going to take a little bit of a look at an article by Jonathan Lehman, written in response to John MacArthur and the Elders of Grace Community Church. So recently I did a video on the statement by John MacArthur and the elders at Grace Community Church in California talking about why they were choosing to engage in civil disobedience and to, to gather as a church uh, in spite of the government restrictions there in California. And uh, a lot of people have reacted to that and one response was given by Jonathan Lehman over at Nine Marks on their website and he wrote an article and so I want to look at that a little bit here and just continue to give some commentary on this situation. Now before I actually look at this article I just want to encourage people that I think it's really important that we listen. I've talked about this before and I understand we all have very strong opinions and sometimes some very good reasons for our strong opinions but I think it's so important that we be fair and how we listen to people, how we understand them and assess their view. Uh, it's especially hard to do that when you have a visceral reaction to what someone is saying. And I think with situations like this, there's a lot of visceral responses. And it's really hard to listen. I personally feel like what Jonathan Lehman says here uh, does make some good points, but it's hard for people to hear what he's saying if they just right off the bat disagree with him. There's a lot of emotional response. Now, what I want to show you in this article, this is very interesting, it's called A Time for Civil Disobedience, A Response to Grace Community Church's Elders. So it sounds almost right off the bat like what he's saying might be against them. But I want you to notice, if you listen very carefully, he says something really good at the beginning here. He says, before your church follows John MacArthur's Grace Community Church and begins to gather in defiance of governmental orders this Sunday, hold on, stop and think with me for a moment. So again, that sounds like he's going to say something against uh, John MacArthur and Grace Community Church. He does uh, express some disagreement, and we'll look at that a little bit, but look at what he says at the beginning. In case you missed it, MacArthur provided a wonderful statement affirming Christ's lordship over governments, our duty to disobey governments when governments forbid worship, and the government's lack of jurisdiction over a church's doctrine, practice, and polity. Plus, pastors do well to learn from MacArthur's example of courage. In years and decades to come, we may have many opportunities to defy governmental incursions. I also respect the decision of the Grace Community Church elders to respectfully inform their civic leaders that they have exceeded their legitimate jurisdiction and that faithfulness to Christ prohibits them from observing the restrictions they want to impose on their corporate worship services. That might be the right decision. I believe it's a judgment call. But if they feel bound of conscience to gather their church, then they should gather. So I think Jonathan is actually saying something very supportive. He sounds very sympathetic uh, to John MacArthur and the elders of Grace Community Church. And I think in seeing this whole article and some of the other side that he gives, a lot of people miss that. I noticed that in the video that I gave too. I was actually in many ways offering support. I said that I think that there is some level of pushback that makes sense in certain situations, especially out in California with some of these churches and what they're dealing with out there. But a lot of people don't hear that because they hear some disagreement in what's being said. And so Jonathan Lehman actually does say there that he's affirming if their church leaders feel that this is the right course of action, then he's supportive of that. But he does say, I'd also like to add civil disobedience may not be the only legitimate or moral course of action at this moment. So what I hear him saying is that uh, civil disobedience might be something that churches decide to do and that might be the right thing for them, but there might be other choices that would be wiser or a better choice for churches in certain situations. And so he's going to give about four different reasons why gathering in large groups in a church building may not be the only choice or the wisest choice. And actually, I think what he's saying makes a lot of sense. There's some wisdom in this. I understand that people are going to viscerally disagree in some cases uh, just because they have a lot of uh, emotion when it comes to this issue. 
Uh, but I think what he said here actually does make some sense. So he gives four things here to think about. And I'm not going to actually go in them in detail. I just want to read his summary. All that to say, it's not immediately evident to me that a government's original orders back in March and now again in July are, in MacArthur's words, an illegitimate intrusion of state authority into ecclesiastical matters. One could argue they are doing their job by seeking to maintain peace, order, and the preservation of life as hundreds of people gather, potentially infect one another, and then scatter into the wider community. I'm sympathetic with Grace Community's concern about the indefinite elongation of this time. Still, if the state does have the authority to tell church leaders, if you try to bind the consciences of church members by telling them they should attend a gathering that could physically harm them, we will intervene. Then we should be patient even as that time extends for a while. Christians have endured the inconveniences of persecution and pandemics for years, even decades before. So overall, the sentiment that I'm reading in Jonathan Lehman is that he actually is very sympathetic to John MacArthur and the elders of Grace Community Church and their decision. And on some level, I think he actually supports it, is kind of what I hear him saying. On the other hand, he's saying that uh, maybe there's more to it, maybe there's other ways of looking at it. And not everybody agrees on that. And there's a couple of reasons I would say that this uh, situation is hard to look at and the problems are exacerbated. And the first one is that there is really a difficulty in assessing the true danger of this pandemic. I think that's a real key point here. And I can tell when people are commenting, even in my last video, that some people feel the pandemic is just not that dangerous and other people feel it is. Some people are very suspicious of how the government is handling this and they feel that the government is making a big thing of nothing. Other people really feel it is a big deal. And so in comments, you'll actually see some people say, we're putting people in danger by gathering together. Of course we should listen to the government. And other people saying, no, we shouldn't listen to the government. There's not real risk. This is just government overreach. So that's the first problem is how dangerous is this pandemic? And that's actually something uh, Jonathan Lehman mentions. Uh, he says what's implied in MacArthur's statement is that his elders don't believe there's a real threat with COVID-19. So I, I understand that. Some people, when they look at the numbers, they don't feel it's a threat. Other people, when they look at what's happening right now, they do see that it is something that is dangerous. And I have to say, you know, getting back to what I said in my other video about baseball and we can't meet, actually the Phillies and the Yankees, from what I heard, the Phillies were my favorite team, uh, had to postpone a game because of an outbreak of COVID-19 against the last team that the Phillies played against in Miami. Uh, so now their game is postponed due to COVID-19. So obviously there's an element of our culture, a very large element of our culture, that believes that this pandemic is a threat and a danger to our health and well-being, and they're even willing to alter things like Major League Baseball and postpone games. So it's really tough. There are two sides to this. Is this pandemic dangerous or is it not? And uh, some of you in the comments might say, yeah, I think it really is a danger. Some of you may say, no, it's overblown. But that is one difficulty is assessing the actual level of danger of this pandemic. The other problem, and I would acknowledge this, is governmental inconsistency. And a lot of you brought this up, that the real thing that rubs people the wrong way and gets under their skin and really causes that visceral reaction is when the government allows things like protests, but then clamps down on churches gathering. And uh, we do have to acknowledge that that can be very frustrating. And really, I think it comes across as hypocritical when we see that when governments are not consistent. And in California, this is a really big issue because they have had protests out there and then these church restrictions are pretty tight. And uh, I live in New England. I said that before in my other videos. So I'm not dealing with these things the way some of you are. I'm not dealing with them directly. So I know it's very emotional for you. I do want to say though, in fairness, uh, that I read this article headline, Newsom appeals to California protesters, consider others stay home. Now I can tell a lot of people that have uh, viewed my previous video 
uh, are not very fond of Gavin Newsom. But I did want to point out that he actually uh, has encouraged protesters to stay home from what I'm reading here. And so I don't think the California government necessarily has encouraged protests, but they have kind of looked the other way, is what I, is what I gather. Uh, so the real issue is going to boil down to how does the government react to churches gathering? And in California, if there are consequences for churches that gather in violation of government restrictions, I think that's going to be perceived as a great inconsistency. And I think that's where it becomes more clear cut that if the government really isn't enforcing things with protests, but then clearly starts to enforce things against churches, I do think that's going to create a lot of reaction, and understandably so. So we'll see what happens with that. But these are the things that uh, are playing into the issue. Again, that we don't know the real level of threat, or people have very strong opinions on that. And also, uh, government inconsistency. And I definitely understand those things. So that plays into all that, including with what Jonathan Lehman is saying here, we just have different views on these things. So that's the kind of thing you have to add to the general thing we're dealing with, uh, with these kinds of issues, separation of church and state, whereas some people would prefer to say separation of state from the church. But regardless, uh, these are things we have to work out and different churches are choosing to work them out in different ways. Again, I would actually say that Jonathan Lehman seems to be very sympathetic and on some level supportive of MacArthur and the elders of Grace Community Church. And I think uh, some people maybe uh, haven't really seen that or acknowledged that. On the other hand, he is giving a more rounded viewpoint, trying to give some other points to look at so that churches can consider. And I have to say, it really depends to some degree on where you live, how you're gonna look at this. Again, I live in New England, and our motto here is live free or die, or as we like to say, live, freeze, and die. But we do have a much more independent, hands-off kind of way of looking at things, and the government uh, tends to stay away from uh, getting overbearing. And so I think that's really helpful and uh, it's good, but we also have a pretty low population in New Hampshire. When you get into high population states and you have governments that are much more strong and centralized, then you are dealing with these issues a lot more directly and they become a lot more difficult to handle. So I understand all of that and uh, I just wanted to give some more thoughts on this talk about it some more. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below, but I do want to add, please try to keep the comments positive and edifying to the conversation. And as always, thank you so much for listening to what I have to say from a fresh perspective.